All right, we're here for the matter of Billings versus Pearson. Um, do we have an attorney from the plaintiff's side that is ready to provide their opening statement? Okay. Um, approach the bench. You may give your opening statement, um, and you're free to move around the courtroom as you see fit. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Jackson McFadden. Today I'll be representing the plaintiff, Alex Billings, as an associate lawyer during this trial. I will be leading through the stipulated facts to review what happened between these students throughout the rest of the trial. Of this trial, we will see the three witnesses, Francis Billings, Alex Billings, and Gabriel Rodriguez. We expect these witnesses will talk about the state of Alex before and after this abuse had taken place, how it affected her as a person. To begin the stipulated facts, Alex Billings and C.J. Pearson both attended the freshman orientation at KHS. These two became friendly by the conclusion of their freshman orientation. They had exchanged cell phone numbers and friended each other in my faith. Alex and C.J. shared an English class, which is where the harassment began. At the end of the first week of school, they were they they met at a musical all ages. Following this meetup, over the course of three months, they exchanged 2,400 text messages through cell phones. Some occurred during school hours. KHS policy prohibits people from bringing cell phones on campus, and during these texts at school, they were failing to do the job that was set in place. They also had interactions on back days, but they weren't able to get on this site during school. On November 1st, 2010, Mrs. Cook called Billings into her office to discuss her poor attendance. During this conversation, Billings revealed to Cook that she was unable to participate fully in school because of the problem of Pearson. Cook promised Billings that he would investigate what was happening and Billings asked her for it back to him and the problem was escalated to an even higher level of abuse. Cook did not contact Billings about Pearson again. On the same day, November 2nd, 2010, Cook emailed Principal Lee about the conversation with Alex. He got back to Cook on this topic but it took her a week to respond. When Lee did respond, she shut down the idea to pursue this situation anymore, and it was beyond the scope of our view, which is not true. As some of this abuse was occurring on school property and affecting Billings' ability to focus on her studies. Uh, continuing on what we see that on November 10, 2010, Cook spoke to Pearson regarding Alex. Cook did not act on anything that was talked about during her talk with Pearson. On the date, December 1st, 2010, Francis Billings learned of the MyFace postings against Alex. At this time, Francis initiated a discussion with Alex about the MyFace posting in which Alex was the target of abuse and even assault. That same day, Alex and Francis met with the KHS principal lead. During this meeting, Francis Billings confronted Principal Lee about Pearson's alleged abuse and bullying of Billings to show Principal Lee some of the text messages in my face postings, which caught Principal Lee off guard. Even though she had already known about them following this conversation, Francis withdrew Alex from KHS on the same day. The two visited St. Joseph's Academy and spoke with Dr. Gabriel and Rodriguez, the SJA school psychologist. Francis then enrolled Alex in the SJA. Alex began attending and began the attending the following week, December 6, 2010. I should agree to charge Billings $15,000 in tuition for the remainder of 2010 school year and $20,000 a year thereafter. The following day, Francis Billings went to the Metro City Superior Court and received a temporary restraining order prohibiting Pearson from contacting Alex. Alex Billings began seeing Dr. Schneider, a therapist, twice a week. Schneider charges $200 a visit and recommends treatment for one year for a total of $20,800. We request that the school and Pearson pay for these fines for the reason of negligent supervision against the school and intentional infliction of emotional distress against Pearson. We also request that New Columbia Civil Code 4372 come into play as well and the defendants pay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Um, the 
defense. Do you have your opening statement prepared and ready to go? Josh Lundzak, and I'm a defense lawyer at Jersey Judge. This is a case about falsely accused boring and accusations of negligence. The defense will call three witnesses to the stand. We will call KHS school counselor Christine Cook, who will say that Alex confronted her about a problem with her, and she looked into it, ultimately deciding that there wasn't much she could do other than send a note with Bill to give to her parents, since it does not illustrate boring, as defined by the KHS boring policy. We will call C.J. Pearson, the 14-year-old ninth grader at KHS, and he will say he did not bully the plaintiff, Alex Bill, that they are just simply messing around. He was trying to be his friend and include him in the group, and that he did not cause him feeling the emotional distress. Lastly, we will call KHS principal Brenda Lee, who will explain that whatever took place between the billions of Pearson was off school ground and there was nothing to do, and that there was nothing they could do about it without stepping outside of their professional boundaries. As the defense, we are going to bring forward the evidence of King's High School's anti bullying policy, the cell phone policy, and the emails from Justine Cook and Brent. Thank you. One thing that I want to um, put forth here is that uh, we have, um, I know that. Uh, there was a lot of information provided in both of those opening statements. Um, one of the things that the jury would have access to in a regular court case would be um, the notes that are there, right? The notes that are there. Um, and so what I think we'll maybe do is build a folder where we can share the opening statements into those folders, right? We can share those opening statements into those folders. Um, uh, so that the jury will have an opportunity to read and understand that. Okay, does that make sense? So, like, you guys, if you're like, man, I, there's a piece of information in there, but I don't remember what it is, you'll be able to look at that and take a note on it. Okay, Sabrina, were you able to share that with your witness? Um, so, our uh, sorry, plaintiff, do you have a witness that you are ready to call? Yes. yes. Right. <coughs> Who are we calling? Uh, I'm calling Gabriela Rodriguez. Gabriela Rodriguez. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but, but the truth? <laughs> All right, have Sorry, a seat. The clipboard. the clipboard. I brought the clipboard out. All right. Okay. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Sam Church, and today I will be asking Gabriela Rodriguez a couple of questions. Um, and actually, can you share that note that I just gave to you with Sam, please? So either way, okay, you're good. Okay. Uh, what is your job description? Hello, my name is Gabriela Rodriguez, and I'm a school psychologist at SJA. I was recently promoted to the head of the recruitment committee. Do you enjoy your job? Yes, I do. What makes your job enjoyable? Um, getting to help young adults with issues that are sometimes too hard to talk about with parents or guardians, which was seen in them. What impression did you receive from the Billings family when you first met them? They seemed upset from what um, it seemed as though Alex had been crying. Both parents were upset with the school because they were not keeping Alex safe. What was the reason that Alex Billings was at SJA that day? Um, her father thought that the current school was not suitable for her. So, um, because of the school's neglect. As a professional, why did you recommend the year-long commitment to Alex for receiving counseling? Because the emotional and academic evaluation of Alex was indicated a long, uh, lasting emotional trauma from the harassment. Um, this program will give Alex the support she needs. What was the diagnosis you gave to Alex? I gave her PTSD. Why were you able to make this diagnosis? 
team that six of the climbers in the PTSD test she was threatened, had recurrent nightmares, avoided going to school, and lost interest in activities. Also was having difficulty falling and staying asleep, as well as um, had trouble concentrating. How long do these factors have to be in play for the disorder to be One, diagnosed? One month, in this case, longer. Being under these circumstances for more than one month affected Billings in what other ways? Her emotional state and physical state were affected, affected negatively, which I could tell upon her on first round. What was your opinion on how the school handled this situation? The school neglected to aid Alex in her time of distress, which was a violation of Code 2211. No further questions, Your Honor. Um, we're ready for uh, cross examination. Cross examination. And yeah. we're <laughs> ready. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you get you like take, no, you rubbing your hand like you're back somebody out of the chair. It's, it's, it's not rubbing them together. <laughs> Please take oh. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. So Gabriella Rodriguez, you have a PhD in, in school psychology, right? Uh, you diagnosed Mrs. Billings with post-traumatic stress disorder, is that correct? Uh, based on what evidence? She's got a bunch of the, signs, signs for the requirements for the test. She was threatened and reoccurring her parents avoided going to school, was interested in activities, and was having difficulty. Were you aware that Mrs. Billings had skipped school and gave the school a false number and stayed up playing video games while home from school? Do you think that in any way could have affected her sleep? Which in turn could have caused her to lose interest in school and her extracurricular activities? Um, there's a few different questions that I think lawyers have right now. Okay? Can you come here and ask me what your question is? I'm going to say. What was your question? Okay, so I'm gonna I want to kind of pause here because um, Acacia's got a question that is fairly relevant to everyone as we move forward. The first witness or the first witnesses are sometimes a little difficult because you're trying to figure out like what is the style, how do you insert this piece of evidence, what are the words you use to place an objection, right? Because who here at some point felt like, I want to make an objection, but I don't know how? Anybody have that feeling? Objection. Or I don't know which words to say. Yeah, there you go. I mean, now, Braden is very, Braden is very comfortable saying objection, right? But, and, and has a sense for when he should say it. But the problem with that is he has to be able to say objection and follow that with a, a, a fairly formal statement of why he's objecting to what's being said, right? So did anybody have a feeling they wanted to do that but didn't because they weren't sure what language to use? Okay, so tell me what you were thinking. With the question, like, did, he, did she know like, about trying to do and stuff like that instead of school? Okay. You wanted to object to that? That was your own question. That was your question. Or did no, you want to object to her answer? answer? Can you do that? I, I don't, don't think you can do that. No, you can't like, object. Some, you need to, you would need to phrase your question in such a way. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that you yeah. didn't get that answer. So if you got that answer, you got what you got. Yeah. So, so yeah. The, the thing to do in that situation would be to 
on your feet try to act, ask a follow-up question. Um, and remember that just one lawyer, I know that we've assigned it as one lawyer's questioning one witness, but you could, like he could very easily say, um, our attorney, attorney Brown or Representative Brown is going to ask a few further questions and kind of pass off that role there. That's, that's perfectly acceptable. Or um, you can hand a note with an additional question that you, you've written down because he has the ability to move around the courtroom, right? Does that make sense? So you can wave him over, right, and hand him a question. Got it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, I'm, I'm sorry. I felt like really mean saying that. So it's all fine. <laughs> so you, you, you don't have to worry. We, there's, okay. Hey, there's there's no crying in baseball. Okay. All right. Um, so moving on. Um, where are we at? No, we, can we just start? At least going to start. Three more minutes. No. We have three more minutes. So Crap. do we have rebuttal questions for Mrs. Roder Mrs. Um, Rodriguez? Follow-up questions? Nope. Okay. All right. So, have a seat. Mr. Souter, what do you want to do? Two minutes isn't enough okay. to be fair to the next witness. 